Hey, welcome back. It's Chris here from Chris's Sci-Fi Reactions. Today, we're back with another classic Who. If you want the full uncut, unedited reaction, don't um, forget to head over to Patreon, where you can get up to part three of the 10th planet now. Uh, last episode was very much an introductory episode. Um, yeah, so... I think we really started off just very introductory and ended the episode very much on an important factor of, you know, how viruses can be transmitted to those that, say, don't have a resistance or anything like that to it. So, yeah, I don't think there's much more. The power is currently off. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully the lighting isn't all that bad. But without further ado, let's just get into this episode. What do you think they'll do to us, Doctor? Uh, I'm not sure, dear boy. We should just have to wait and see. It's all my fault. If I'd known it was going to be like this, I'd never have come. Well, you did come, my dear, so it's too late to worry about that and stop <coughs> snivelling. I'm not snivelling. It's me nose running again. Anyway, I'm feeling better now. I don't suppose anyone cares. But of course they care, my dear. Oh, that's a bit don't of an attention. It's not your fault at all. This sort if of thing. Is, it's mine. Don't you think this has happened before? That we carry an infection from one age to another, or even one planet to another? Oh, I don't want to think yeah, about it. Yeah, I mean, that is possible. <coughs> but I must say that we are using... We never thought about it. ...to spread through the whole ship, become an epidemic. Well, that depends on the strength of the virus infection. If it's half as bad as my co -op. What will happen if one does? It'll be a disaster. Each man has his allotted task. No one had reckoned on this eventuality. There must be something we can do about it. Our microvirologists are trying to find the answer. One of them is with the commander now. Unfortunately, the data covering this type of fever was lost long ago in the primal wars of the 10th segment. Really? Uh, the 10th segment. Of unconsciousness to moments of sudden clarity. Perhaps it's better that you shouldn't talk. No, must, I must. Promise me, Milliam, should anything happen to me? They're not really savage. savages, it might just be some sort of tradition they have with burying their dead. We all have different traditions regarding disposing of the dead. for ejection. Commit the body to space burial. Yes. Will anyone speak for the prisoners? I will. And I. My father would wish it. His only desire was that justice should be done and a sensible solution to this crisis be found. Yes, yes. Yes, I am. Um, she's very smart. The only means by which Earth life may be extended and perpetuated, the guardian for the time being in charge of the ship, shall have absolute power to punish or restrain any life form that endangers the success of its mission. My contention is that it was no accident that this disaster has happened. 
I see that you came here intentionally to spread the disease. Oh, that's utter nonsense. I mean, how can you possibly... I say that you are agents of the planet towards which this spaceship is proceeding. That you came here to destroy us. Why? We're human beings like you are. But why should we? There's the crux of the matter. Do you expect us to believe that nonsense? That you, managed in that ridiculous machine called the TARDIS, have managed to travel through time? Guardians, monoids, these beings, whatever they are, place a heavy strain on our credulity. Well, that's not very difficult. If your medical records are anything to go by, this segment of time, far from being one of the most advanced in knowledge, is one of the worst. We can cope with so all true. Down to the 57th segment of Earth life rather than faster. Perhaps even kill one of the Guardians. Are we to be fooled by such tricks? No! Are we to be taken in by such nonsense? No. Simply because these I'd creatures have been punished. I probably feel the same way here. That's right. Let them be taken to the ejector chamber. They must be fooled. Dr. Timothy is he all right? I hope so, my dear. I hope so. Do you think he may have caught the fever? Well, I'm afraid he may have. It appears that this virus is more virulent than I suspected. Guardians, listen to me. Guardians, listen to me. This is a court of law. Let him speak. This is a fair hearing. Fair hearing. It's a for reason in this matter. It's a kangaroo court. The doctor and his companions have not denied that they brought the fever among us. They say it was an accident. I mean. Killing them in cold blood would sort Guardian, nothing listen out. Listen to me. I've just had news of another disaster. One of our kind, one of the Guardians, has died from the fever. Do you want to hear more? Never mind the arguments of the Defender, because now they are nothing. Now that one of our own kind has died. Ill as any one of your own people. How do you expect him to plea in his own defense, hmm? The verdict of the court was that you are guilty. You and your party have been condemned by an overwhelming majority, and your sentence is ejection into space. Are you aware that you might be committing your entire community to a slow extinction? Trust me. Allow me, help me to find... I do understand both points of view, though. The verdict has been given. But the hearing decided differently, Commander. These people are dangerous. Don't argue with me, Zentos. Those are my instructions. But in case you are right, I wish the doctor... To use his young friend as a guinea pig. That, if he that's a fair choice. I just don't I get why the others the verdict of the court. were so... Now, proceed. I suppose, as I said before, an eye for an eye, a fear. Oh, it's not going to obey, is it? Very well. Yes, certainly. Fine, fine. How will I know where to find them? Well, open your eyes, my dear child, otherwise you, you won't well, The TARDIS is pretty okay. big. <laughs> what did you say? I said okay. Yes, I thought you did. Now, once this crisis is over, I am going to teach you to speak English. I shall go with them. Right, off you go. Doctor, our virologists are willing to give you all the help you need. Can you describe the virus responsibly? Yes, sir. I wrapped Stephen warmly. Is there anything else I can do? Yes, now I want you to find all the sick people in this spaceship and give them the same treatment. You mean keep them warm? Exactly, my child, yes. Right. I really like the use of animals because many vaccines, that sort of thing, animals are a vital part of it. Yes, I know I'm a bit of a quack, but the combination of these two membrane fluids, a little at a time, should do the trick. Ah, thank you, thank you. You know, you're far more knowledgeable than most people realize, aren't you? <laughs> oh, now all we have to do is to wait and watch. Come along. Where are you going? That, that sort of reminds me like of a nicotine patch. Um, instead of using a needle, though. Well, it's going to be much doggier, my child, as you say, if I just sat and did nothing. <laughs> Come along. The right treatment? Mm. <laughs> Doctor, it's a long time now since you gave him that stuff, and the fever only seems to be getting worse. Mm. 
Well, it's about an hour, my dear. He seems to be reacting quite normally. Well, yes, he's fighting it. I mean, yeah, this, this episode I have really enjoyed so far. Has something gone wrong? The fever's down. And the temperature's dropped. You mean? I mean it's... You have nothing further to worry about, sir. The sick have been tended to, and the others immunized against further attack. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. So you're oh, right. Let's hope this. Doctor, the command of fever's gone down. The no, he's going to be all right. Oh, oh, splendid. splendid. With COVID. Doctor, the scan of Earth. That's interesting. The last moment has come. Is that Earth? Now you can continue with the building that, of that scene sort room. of when reminds me of uh, the yes, second episode, The End of the World, of New Who. In 700 years' time. Yes, in 700 years. Young man, therefore you must travel with understanding as well as hope. Goodbye, Zentos. Goodbye, Doctor. <laughs> so it reminds me of like Santa Claus on the float waving to the children. <laughs> Goodbye. <clears throat> Th this story is four parts, isn't it? Have I have I misread something? Okay, so something's gone wrong with the TARDIS, so... You really must let me go first, child. <laughs> well, that's strange. Something must have gone wrong. It appears we've landed back in the same place. Take a look oh. at this, my boy. You'd think they would have looked out of the scanner first. <laughs> Depends on how long ago it was. What? Oh, that's so true. Yeah. Here, is there? We've only been gone so a few this... seconds. Melly well, and yeah, but technically the TARDIS in a few seconds could travel it, my dear? What have you found? hundreds of years in the future. A statue. Oh, it's a mono. Oh, okay, so we're sort of dealing with a conquering next, I assume. Okay, so... That was a really, really good episode, I feel. It dressed a number of uh, factors, particularly around viruses and that, and how they mutate over time, all of that. And I really did enjoy it. Also, the ethical debate, you know, sort of the fear that people feel towards others, you know, that that are in, that brought the infection in instead of just uh, asking for their help or accepting that they may be able to help they literally want retribution for the death of one of their own um and that is a very human thing an eye for an eye but yeah it's i must admit I would have been fine with this story being a two-parter, frankly. But yeah, let's let's break it down. We start off uh, with them being locked in a, a cell. Um, Dodo feeling sorry for herself, basically, crying. Because she feels guilty, and I understand that, you know, it wasn't really her fault. Um, obviously we're dealing with monoids uh, dying, and then here you have the doctor, like a medical doctor, basically talking about the virus and that, you know, time that they had lost their immunity to it. and. Yeah, they're a really interesting story, specifically given what's going on 
at the current time. Sort of the father talking about his life doesn't matter as long as the ultimate bigger sort of picture is achieved. Uh, the monoids doing a funeral for one of their own. And ejecting the body out into space. Makes sense, you know, it's a safe way of disposing a body. I mean, if the body's carrying an infection, you do want to get rid of it. Here they're talking about a trial and engaging in a trial. Stephen's understandably worried about, um, you know, them maybe transmitting this virus to other places in the universe. And I totally get it. Then we have, um, basically this guy leading the trial. And you have them discussing all about, you know, whether it was intentional or not. Um, both sides arguing uh, their position. And both sides had merit, you know. But it is interesting that if they suspect they're from the planet they're heading to, why continue to that planet? The only option, are they planning on taking that planet by force, if necessary? You know, is that what they have in mind, you know, that they may have to take the, the planet Refucius, I think they called it, by force, which makes them a bit of an aggressive I mean, they are human beings, but still. Anyway, we sort of learn that, you know, haven't changed that much, still fear the unknown, which is a very common thing. Um, one of the guardians dies and then the jury basically comes back guilty. The, um, Stevens then ill himself with this mutated version of the common cold, basically. Um, then the commander orders uh, them to be allowed to experiment on Steven. And, yeah, the doctor explaining to their doctors or people that deal with viral infections, what it is, and yeah, this episode just had so much good stuff about it, and so relevant to the world we're in at the moment. Uh, then get, then they were getting the necessary things from the animals to make a cure, and it is, what Dodo who said is a bit dodgy, you know, he, Stephen was supposed to be the guinea pig. He gave it to him and then just went straight on. I mean, what if it wouldn't have worked? <laughs> Could have looked pretty bad. Um, as they distribute the virus, um, the, oh, the vaccine people start to slowly get better, and then they uh, say goodbye to them. And I thought I had sort of mixed a story up. I thought this was a four-parter, which it turns out it is. But when this scene happened, I thought, oh my god, I've got it completely wrong. But then they end up coming back um, in the future. And I think they said it was going to take 700 years to complete the statue, so it looks like the monoids have taken over or something like that. And yeah, that's that.
Okay, so that was my breakdown of uh, the arc part two. Yeah, so enjoyed that episode, especially enjoyed this one, but also part one. It will be interesting to see how the story, how much it changes and develops over the next two episodes. I'm really hoping it doesn't change all that much. I'm hoping that like the virus returns and we sort of deal with maybe a different but similar sort of approach. I guess I'll just have to wait and see. You guys know I don't. Um, yeah. So I think that's all for now. If you enjoyed this reaction, don't forget to give it a like, share, and subscribe, as well as my social media accounts listed in the description below. And yeah, that's for um, all for now. I will see you next time. Bye.